got light out here in southern Wisconsin. And, I woke, and when I woke up this morning, it was about 30 degrees. It was pretty chilly. Last night I was hunting on top of my ridge and I saw three does and a spike and one really nice buck that I didn't really recognize. So, yeah, it's about the time of the year that we start seeing some new bucks, which I'm pretty excited about. a branch in the way and I could have hit that branch. So I have no idea. Okay, so I found my arrow. This is this is really weird what happened. I'm not even quite sure. But I did hit it. You can see there's blood all the way up the arrow. I'm not sure if it passed all the way through or what. But then my broadhead in my the piece that the broadhead screws into is gone. There's like some lung material on there and a bunch of blood and hair all the way up here. You can see right in the arrow shaft is just gone. It's the arrow split up. So I'm really confused. I'm probably gonna give it a little more time, maybe five more minutes. And then I'm gonna go look for her. So I did get a hit and I do think I hit the lungs. I'm not sure what else so but I'm so excited. I just wanna get this deer. I'm mad that the shot wasn't on camera though. I thought I had the GoPro on. That happened so many times where I think I have the GoPro turned on but then it's 
it's not, but I don't know. I think I got this deer though. <laughs> so I just found the first blood on the ground. It's a lot of blood. I'm colorblind, so I really can't see blood that well, but this is about 15 yards from where I shot it. I found all of this because she was standing here for a while. Yeah, there's some long stuff too. She was standing here for a while and she kind of started to bleed out pretty well and she walked up this way, so I'm gonna follow the trail and see if I can find her. Well, I'm just gonna do a little bit of an overview of what happened uh, Saturday with that doe. I'm just, right now I actually just moved a tree stand. It's by far the highest one I've ever put up. It's about 30 feet up there. I don't even know, it might be even too high, but I don't know. But so, Saturday I shot that doe about 10 yards. I waited about 10 or 15 minutes and then I went and found the arrow. And I also found a bunch of blood, like a lot of blood. And I waited about 10 more minutes. I was excited to start tracking it. And I tracked it for about 40 yards. I thought it was gonna drop right away about 50 yards because of how much blood I was seeing. So I just kept tracking it and since I'm kinda colorblind, I couldn't see the blood very well so I asked my mom to come help me and she helped me track it for about two or 300 yards. After that with a lot of spots of big pools of blood and a pretty steady good tr blood trail too. And then right at the end, we had to go to town at that day. So right at the end, we actually spooked the deer up. And I was super surprised about that. I thought it would have died for sure after all the blood we see had seen, but no. We came back about four hours later and it actually ran onto my neighbor's property. So we went back there and tracked it. And we followed that blood trail for about 800 more yards. Maybe not that much, maybe 600 more yards. So about approximately 900 yards total that day. And before we gave up because the blood trail, trail kinda dried up pretty well and it was getting cold and late. So we went inside and the blood trails, the blood drops we were finding were about a drop the size of a period on a page about every 20 or 30 yards. So it was really getting kind of sparse. Then we, me and James came back the next day. We found a little bit of blood, but it was snowing hard that day. And we gave up pretty early. But he said he kind of knew where he thought it would have been since he drives deer a lot right next to that property on the other side of me. And a lot of times they go and die in this thick patch of weeds. So we went over there, this was Monday, yesterday, today's Tuesday, and we right away, we walked up the hill a little ways and it was just laying there right on the road. And the we were gonna maybe try to get, salvage some meat off of it if if it looked and smelled good I, I don't know how much it takes for the meat to go bad but the coyotes had been there first and pulled some of the guts out of it but then we took it we loaded it up and we took it back onto my property so it didn't have to stay on the neighbor's property and then we just I tagged it and left it there and that's where it's gonna sit now but we didn't get any meat off of it since the coyotes had eaten a little bit and it might have been bad anyways. It was about 40 degrees dropping down to about 30 or 25 in the nights but it might have been bad anyways after two nights. 
But thanks for watching this episode of Full Draw Outdoors. Um, good luck hunting to anybody that's going to be going out in the near future. And please come back next week or whenever we upload our new video for some more exciting content.